All right, good evening. The Bible tells us in Psalms 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 150 says, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Good evening and happy Thanksgiving. My name is Pastor Norman Scott, Rising Star Baptist Church, 109-25, 164th Street, Jamaica, New York, 114. Three, three, United States of America. I want to thank you for joining. Again, happy Thanksgiving to all of you who have joined us here on tonight. Amen. God is good. He's great. And he is greatly to be praised. We sang a song on Sunday. I couldn't remember the words of it. So I went and I looked up and I did some research and I got the words to those songs, that song. And I'm going to sing a little bit of it tonight as we start off on tonight. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been so good to me. Every day he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. Oh, every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been so good to me. Every day he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. One more time. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. God's been so good to me. Every day he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take the time to glorify the Lord. Take the time to glorify the Lord. Take the time to glorify the Lord today. Amen, amen. Yes, every day is indeed a day of thanksgiving. This past Sunday, uh, although I didn't get to preach the sermon in its fullest, I gave out the points. My subject this past Sunday was every day is Thanksgiving. And I just want to remind us, my brothers and sisters, that even though we're in the Thanksgiving season, uh, when it comes to other seasons, we need to be reminded that every day is Thanksgiving. Uh, Y'all hear me quote every Sunday, Psalm 100, which is a psalm of Thanksgiving. If you listen to it and listen to the words carefully. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, his mercy and pure forever. We need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. We need to serve him with gladness. We need to come before his presence with singing. We need to know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Y'all hear what that verse says? We are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We should be thankful unto him. We need to be grateful unto him 
and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. Every day he wakes you up, the Lord is good. Every day the Lord lets you go to your job, the Lord is good. Every day that you have the opportunity to breathe air, the Lord is good. All right? That fifth verse. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. Mercy. Getting what you don't deserve. His mercy is everlasting. And the final part of that fifth verse of Psalm 100, his truth endures to all generations. That's a good reason to know that every day is Thanksgiving. Yes, it is. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm not going to be long. I'm, I don't want to be long tonight. I know many of you who are with me tonight, you're probably in your kitchen working. You're probably trying to get your stuff together, get your food ready, get your uh, meal ready for tomorrow because you know tomorrow we're going we're going to sit down and we're going to eat and we're going to enjoy all right and then after we eat we're going to enjoy some football those of us who might be watching football we're going to enjoy football on tomorrow and then we're going to enjoy time with family and friends and uh it's going to be a great time so those of y'all that are listening to me tonight those of you that are with me tonight those of you that are sharing with me tonight listen i just want to say thank you for joining us tonight, all right? And I'm not going to keep you here long on tonight, all right? Okay, so with that said, let's do what we always do, all right? I want you to go with me today for our scripture tonight to the book of James. James, the fifth chapter, starting at the 12th verse, and we will conclude at verse number 16. James chapter number five, starting at verse 12, and we're going to conclude at verse number 16. When you have found that place in your Bible, on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your computer or wherever you are looking for the scriptures, all right? We want you to read along with us. Those of you that might not have a Bible, well, praise the Lord. I've got the screen and I'm getting ready to pull it up and share it with you right now. The word of God reads like this from James chapter five, verse number 12. But all things, my brethren, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity of being able to be in your presence once again. Most importantly, we thank you for this Thanksgiving Eve and although we celebrate this Thanksgiving Eve, we want to thank you that every day is Thanksgiving. We want to thank you that every day is a day of Thanksgiving. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for blessing us. And we want to take the time right now to glorify you, to magnify you, to lift you up and to give you praise. Now, I pray that you would bless all of us, that you would keep us in your care, 
Oh, dear God, we love you and we thank you for all of the many blessings that you have poured on us. Now, don't let anything that we say or do be in vain, but let your name get praise, let your name get glory, let your name get honor out of all that we do. We thank you and we bless you for this in the name of Jesus. We do ask and we do pray. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you all again for joining us tonight. Um, if you can hear me tonight, if you can hear and see me, if you're watching on social media, if you're on our Facebook page, can you indicate so by putting that in the chat that you're able to hear and see me clearly? If you can hear me on the conference call line, can you just let me know if you can hear me tonight? I wanna be sure that we, we worked out all of the glitches that we had, we usually have, all right? Blessings to you on tonight. Blessings on you tonight. All right. I have a couple of things that I need to share with us on tonight. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you so much. So glad to see all of you with us tonight. Uh, Deacon McClutcher, Sister McClutcher, Sister Paul Teen Jarvis, uh, Minister in Training Robert Walker. Thank you for calling. Um, I believe on tonight I've got uh, also on on the call with us tonight. I'm, I'm not sure. I I I, I recognize the number, uh, but I, I'm not sure if I can call call the name right now. But uh, I know who she is. Amen. I know who it is. Thank you for joining us tonight on the conference call. Let me say also to those of you who have joined us on uh, our social media, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Reverend Cheryl Scott, and uh, my good friend and brother in the Lord, Reverend Dr. Ralph Hoist. Thank you for joining us tonight on our social media on Facebook tonight. Thank you, Dr. Hoist. We're praying for you and for your family, all uh, right? Uh, speaking of praying for people, uh, I do want to just share with you a couple of things that we are doing. Uh, we are praying for all of those that stand in the need of prayer. As usual, I ask all of you to pray for, uh, let us pray, and we're praying for our church mothers, Mother Omen Bennett, Mother Mamie Brown, Mother Mary Clement, Mother Daisy Hill, Mother Carolyn Stoneman. We're praying for our associate minister, Reverend Myra Wyndham. We're praying for Brother Ed Riddle. I'm happy to report that while we are yet still praying that uh, Sister Samantha Giles, who is the daughter of our own minister, Cynthia Giles, is recovering nicely from surgery uh, that she had this past Monday. And uh, they're doing she's doing just great. And we're hoping and praying that, that she may be going home, maybe she went home today, or she might be going home tomorrow on Thanksgiving. But either way, we are thanking God for her. Thank you for praying for her. And thank you for praying for Minister Cynthia Giles as well. We also want you to continue to pray for, um, want us to pray for our nation and the leadership of our nation. My good friend and brother who's on uh, uh, Facebook with us tonight, Pastor Ralph Hoist of the Bethel Baptist Church in St. Albans. I'm asking that you would pray for him, pray for his family. Uh, his wife is scheduled for surgery and uh, the surgery has been uh, delayed. Uh, so we want to continue to pray. Uh, in addition to that, I also want you to remember uh, in prayer, um, my cousin from Los Angeles, California, Brother Wallace, Washington, who is still in the hospital and he's still recovering from uh, a stroke. Uh, please be mindful. Let's pray for him that the Lord will bless and that the Lord will keep. I'm asking you also to remember in prayer my family. Uh, my, of course, uh, remember my wife, the first lady, Reverend Cheryl Scott. Uh, remember our children, our son Terrence and his family, uh, my, our daughter Donna and her family, um, and then we want you to remember also uh, our siblings, uh, Hattie, Olivia Scott, my sister, Hattie, uh, Hattie, Hattie Cheeseborough, sister, 
Alex Pointer, Reverend Howard Oliver Scott Jr., uh, Brother Maurice Self, Sister uh, Makita Self, Lesser, Brother Greg Self. Once you remember them in their prayer, remember them, their families as well. Um, and then I want us to remember in prayer the Irvin, the McGee, the Hogan, and the Jackson family. It is with profound sorrow that we do indeed announce the passing of Brother Morgan Irvin, who is the brother to uh, Brother, Mor Brother Morgan McGee. I'm sorry. Brother Morgan McGee, who is the brother of the chair lady of my trustee ministry, uh, one of my right hands at my church, uh, Sister Dolores Irvin. Ask that you would remember Sister Irvin and her siblings and their families in your prayer. Remember their family in prayer um, as they are grieving over the loss of their brother Morgan. Uh, as of this moment, at this time, I do not have any arrangements uh, to share with you, but we do ask that you would remember them in your prayers. Remember the family in your prayers as we continue to go forth. Amen. All right. Also want to remember, I, I just remember, we want to remember also in prayer, Brother Ebenezer Jarvis, who is the husband of our sister Paul Team Jarvis. Uh, we want you to remember him in your prayers as well, all right, that the Lord will do what we know he alone is able to do, amen? All right, now, if I uh, fail to mention you in our prayers, we please forgive us. It's a mistake from the head, not the heart. Uh, as I'm thinking about it, uh, I need for you all to remember Brother Gene Fields, that is the husband of our trustee, Ruthie Fields. Uh, Brother Fields has been in and out of the hospital and uh, Sister Fields, who is working feverishly to take care of her husband, take care of her house. Amen. We want you to pray uh, with him and pray for her and pray for the family. Amen. That the Lord will do what we know he's able to do. In addition to praying for Sister Fields, I need for us to pray for her granddaughter, Sister Asia Cedric, as well, uh, that the Lord will bless and that the Lord will keep in his care. All right. Again, there are many others, uh, some information I don't have that I don't know, but you know who you are and you know what you stand in need of, all right? So I ask that you would remember them in prayer, and we are remembering you in prayer. Let me share a couple of things that are happening uh, around the Rising Star Baptist Church. Actually, just two things I'm going to share with you tonight. Um, two, well, actually, three things. I want to share uh, one thing in particular on tonight which is uh this please ma'am please sir take a look and see that on tomorrow which is thanksgiving tomorrow which is thanksgiving the rising star baptist church will be uh giving away thanksgiving dinners those dinners will be to go there will be no eating there will be no tables there will be tables set up uh but we are asking you to pray you to uh to come you can come to the church between 11 a.m and 2 p.m uh and pick up your dinner all right if you need a dinner delivered uh you can call the church our church telephone number is 718-526-2994 and uh thanksgiving dinner is being sponsored by the missionary ministry under the leadership of Minister Cynthia Giles and the men's ministry under the leadership of Deacon Stephen Jackson. We ask that you would remember uh, this team as they are volunteering on tomorrow. Uh, and let's pray that the Lord will bless and that the Lord will keep them as we go forth doing what it is that he has called each and every one of us to do. That's tomorrow. November 24th, Thanksgiving dinners, right at the Rising Star Baptist Church. You can pick them up to go between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Thank you so much. All right. In addition to that, I also want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, that on Friday, 
December the 16th, Friday, December the 16th, the Rising Star Baptist Church will be holding its annual candlelight service. It will take place at the church, 109-25, 164th Street, Jamaica, New York, 11433. That's on Friday, December 16th at 7 p.m. It's a hybrid worship experience. Missionary Sandra Jones is the coordinator for our candlelight service this year. For those of you who know anything about the Rising Star Baptist Church and our annual candlelight service, this service has always been under the leadership and has always been coordinated by Deaconess Mother Carolyn Stroman. Uh, Deaconess Stroman um, has... Uh, is, is stepping to the side and wanting some other people to come and take lead. So Missionary Sandra Jones has volunteered uh, to come and take leadership of our annual candlelight service. And we want you to come and be a blessing. That service will be at 7 o'clock p.m. again on Friday, December 16th, 2022. Our guest preacher for this worship experience will be my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Deshaun Burrell, the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Deer Park. Pastor Deshaun Burrell is an anointed vessel, a powerful preacher. If you not, if you have not heard Pastor Deshaun Burrell, well, you need to come to the Rising Star Baptist Church and be with us for that worship experience. It's going to be a powerful one, y'all. You need to be there and you need to be in place with us. Now, if by chance you cannot come and you cannot be a part of that worship experience. Uh, as I said, and as the flyer says, it is a hybrid worship experience and you will be able to see and view that on our Facebook live page and on our YouTube channel as well. All right, so we want you to be a part of that and come and share with us as we go higher in the Lord in our annual candlelight service. All right, God bless you, God keep you. Amen. All right, that's all of the announcements that I have uh, for this evening. Let's continue to pray. I'm sorry, no, I've got one more. I don't, I don't have a, uh, I do have one more announcement that I do want to share with us. Uh, uh, all right, this is something in the near future that we're getting ready to do. Uh, I want you to get ready to join us at the at, join us, the Rising Star Baptist Church family. We will be holding a luncheon. The luncheon is entitled Blessing Those Who Have Been a Blessing. Um, we will be having this on Saturday, February the 25th, 2023 at 12 o'clock noon, 12 o'clock noon. Uh, it will be held at the Merrick Park Baptist Church, 120-02 Marsden Street, Jamaica, New York, 11434. Uh, my good friend and my brother in the Lord, Elder Thaddeus Hawkins, is the pastor, teacher, senior pastor at the Merrick Park Baptist Church. And they have graciously opened their doors for us to hold this luncheon. The tickets are $75 per person. Uh, you can contact us at the Rising Star Baptist Church, 718-526-2994. If you don't get to speak to anyone, you can leave a message and let them know you're interested in being at the Blessing Those Who Have Been a Blessings Luncheon. That's February 25th, 2023 at 12 noon. Uh, the committee uh, is working on a payment plan so that you can pay. Uh, you don't have to pay it all right away. All right. But they're working on a payment plan so that you, my brothers and sisters, can uh, uh, make payments, uh, all right, and, and we need you to pay those tickets, pay, pay in advance, and the deadline, the deadline for purchasing those tickets is going to be January 25th, 2023, all right, so again, blessing those who have been a blessing luncheon, all right, we're going to be honoring some individuals who have been a blessing to the Rising Star Baptist Church. Uh, I will name those individuals at a later date, uh, but we have contacted them and all of them have graciously accepted to be our honorees and we're going to have a great time in the Lord. Let me just share with you all 
uh, who our preacher for uh, that lunch and that occasion is. That's going to be my friend and brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Reverend Dr. Damone Paul Johnson. He serves as the pastor of the Metropolitan New Testament Mission Baptist Church in Albany, New York. He is the moderator of the Central Hudson Baptist Association of New York, and he is the vice president at large of the Empire Baptist Missionary Convention Congress of Christian Education. Most importantly, the Reverend Dr. Damone Paul Johnson is somebody's preacher. You need to come and hear him. You need to come and share with us on that Saturday, February 25th, 2023 at 12 noon, all right? Blessing those who have been a blessing, all right? All right, thank you so much. That is all the announcements I have for tonight. Uh, when we come back next week, when we come back on Sunday, for that matter, we'll have some more information that we want to share with you. All right. Okay, I've done enough talking. It's time for me to give the meditation for tonight. T time for us to share in a word on tonight. Amen. It's time for us to share in a word on tonight. Please, man, please uh, go back with me to the book of James, chapter 5, the book of James, chapter 5, and in the book of James, chapter 5, it is going to be verse number 16 that's going to arrest our attention tonight. James, chapter 5, verse number 16, that's going to arrest our attention on tonight, my brothers and sisters. All right. James chapter five, verse number 16. All right. I'm going to read it from the King James Version, the English Standard Version, and the Holman Christian Standard Bible. James chapter five, verse number 16. All right. From the King James Version, you will find these words. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, go with me, my brothers and sisters, to James Chapter 5, verse number 16, from the English Standard Version, you'll find these words. Almost says the same thing as the King James. Listen to what God's word says. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Let me share one more with us from the Holman Christian Standard Bible, James chapter five, verse number 16. You will find these words. It says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The urgent request of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tonight, our Thanksgiving meditation tonight, I wanna to talk to us from the topic on this evening, Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. I want to talk and ask this question. Whose turn is it to pray? Whose turn is it to pray? I want us to think about that for a little while tonight. Well, for many of us, the turkey should, should just about be thawed out all right, I, I know mine is thawed out. I, I, I started thawing it out and I've already gone through the process of seasoning my turkey and, 
got it all ready and everything. I, I've even done some massaging. I, I like to massage my 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 uh my seasonings into my turkey. So I, I went and I got my hands real dirty and, and massaged them. And when I when they came up from 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 being and all of that, my hands were real messy and slippery. All right. Uh, but I've massaged my seasonings into uh, the turkey. Um, those of you who might have needed to go out and get uh, some uh, last minute shopping, you've already done that because today is Wednesday. All right, you've gone to the supermarket and you made it your business to get those things that you forgot to put on your list. Uh, we have spent all these weeks planning and preparing, and it's all about to come to a climax on tomorrow, my brothers and sisters. Yes, it is. It's going to climax on tomorrow in what we call the meal of the year, the one that everyone drools over and waits for with great anticipation. It is a day of thanksgiving a day set aside to reflect on the blessings God has showered on us throughout the year. But as I said earlier, and as I wanted to say on Sunday, we need to shower, we need to, to thank God and show our thanks to him every day because every day is Thanksgiving as far as I'm concerned. And when we celebrate that day of Thanksgiving, that fourth Thursday in every year, we try to do it by eating up all that God has provided for us. Some of us try to do it in one day. But before we do that, you know what comes up? You know what the one thing is that we should do? That's that prayer, that Thanksgiving prayer that Thanksgiving prayer, that prayer that every family member secretly desires to pray. Okay, no, I'm just kidding, because some folks just don't like to pray. Some, some folks are afraid to pray. Um, but this is the prayer at the start of the Thanksgiving meal could possibly be called the prayer of the year. The only rival that the, the Thanksgiving prayer has is the first prayer of the new year. I imagine God waits for this prayer with great beatific expectancy because it is your gratitude to God. It is your prayer of gratitude to God for his grandiose generosity. But when it comes to this particular Thanksgiving prayer, the typical family Thanksgiving gathering sounds a little bit like this. Listen, watch this. Do you want me to pray again? I prayed last year. Yes, that goes on at the table. Or don't ask me to do it. Because I never know what to say. Uh, <laughs> then some folks, uh, while at the Thanksgiving table, they'll say, do we have to pray? Everybody is starving and ready to eat. One of my colleagues, one of my colleagues, uh, he was sharing with me. He said, when they were younger, uh, I laughed about this one when he said it. He said, here's the one that, that, that most people say. He said, hide y'all, because grandma looking for somebody to do the prayer. <laughs> That's amazing, my brothers and sisters. However, here's what I want us to get tonight. Here's what I want you and I to get tonight. The truth that I want us to get tonight, the truth is that all of us are capable of prayer. It is a terrible misfortune that most Christians, yeah, most Christians, think a person has to be called to prayer. We are all called to prayer as soon as we are called to salvation. Let me say that again. All of us are called to prayer when we were called to salvation. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, 
is nothing more than the application of the heart that loves God. The Apostle Paul challenges us to pray without ceasing. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Jesus bids us in Matthew 26, 41, he says, watch and pray. So how can we think that any of us are excused from prayer? We're not excused, my brothers and sisters. Jeremiah tells us in Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, and if you don't mind, I want to just paraphrase it. It says, why bother carving out cisterns to hold water if you don't intend to get thirsty? In other words, why should we become living vessels for God if we do not intend to ask him to fill us? The word of God says, if your soul is famished, come. If your body and your mind are afflicted, come. If you suffer from wretchedness and pain, come and be consoled. Let the sick come to the physician who can heal all thy diseases. On tonight, I got three quick things, and I'm going to try to make them as quick as possible. I, I didn't want to be this long, and I'm looking at the time, and I should be almost finished by now. But I want to look at three quick things tonight that's going to help us and that's going to bless us as we go forth in the word on tonight. All right, my brothers and sisters, here we go. Now, the first thing that I want us to look at at notice, my brothers and sisters, all right, here's the first thing that we need to take notice of. The first point that I want to make, my brothers and sisters, is this. All right. Prayer comes from the heart. Let me say that again. Prayer comes from the heart. If you're looking at the screen, the screen tells us that point number one says prayer must come from the heart and not from the head. I'm going to give you a little time to write that down because I know that's a little long there. Prayer must come from the heart and not from the head. Prayer is something that we cannot rehearse, my brothers and sisters. You do not rehearse prayer. Prayer has to flow naturally, like a stream after a heavy rain. God hears the prayers of kings and princes, preachers and deacons, ushers and choir members, uh, saints and sinners, uh, missionaries, and he hears the prayers of even you, my brothers and sisters. And when he hears our prayers, he hears our prayers without interruption. The only thing that can disrupt our communication with God is our own muddled, cloudy, or uncertain relationship with God. If you do not have the right relationship with God, then guess what, my brothers and sisters? You are going to suffer with communicating with God. Once you have enjoyed the sweetness of God's love, you will find it impossible to savor anything but him. No one else can lead you to that fountain where you can cast your soul at the Savior's feet. But you might be saying, Brother Pastor, I do not know what to say. That's nonsense, my brothers and sisters. The words do not come from your head. So there is no point in searching your head for what to say. Prayer is spontaneous. Prayer is unplanned when it flows from the heart. Let me give this illustration. A pastor went with a sick friend to the doctor. Instead of the usual quick prescription, the doctor sent this man to the hospital for x-rays and lab work. As the pastor sat in the waiting room, he started to worry about his, his, his friend.
nurses and doctors were hurrying around as they tended to the sick patients. Phones were ringing at the desks and there was a general anxiety building up right there in the hospital. The pastor felt the stress building up and he thought to himself, if only I could find a quiet place to pray. He turned around and his eyes fell on a sign at the corner desk and that sign read, pray here. I need y'all to listen to me. So he went and knelt in prayer for his sick friend. Two hours later, the doctor decided that this pastor's friend could go home. The test proved negative. Simple medication would resolve the problem that this pastor's friend was having. On the way home, the pastor shared his concern for his brother, his friend and brother. At the prayer corner, the hospital had provided in the waiting area. The friend looked at the pastor and laughed because he said, I saw that sign. He said that sign did not say pray here. The sign said pay here. The point that I'm trying to make is that we do not need a special place or a special time to pray. We can pour out our hearts to God wherever we are. Whatever we are doing, God calls all of us to our knees when we need him, not necessarily our physical needs, but our spiritual needs. Maybe the pastor misread the sign, but more likely in some mysterious way, this pastor saw what God wanted him to see and his heart was ready to receive the message. Right there in the midst of swirling activity in the waiting area of a hospital, the pastor found peace and the answer to his prayer. I want all of you to know tonight that when we want to communicate with God, we need to let our heart do the talking and not our head. Let me say that again. When it's time for us to communicate with God, we should let our heart do the talking and not our head. It makes no sense to tell God you love him if you will not confess your faults to him. God cannot fix what you claim is not broken. If you need him in the midnight hour, you need to tell him. If you want to draw closer to him, you need to tell him. If you need him to fix a few things, you need to tell him by tell him to start by first fixing you. That's a good prayer right there, my brothers and sisters. It's a good prayer to start with. Work on that one for a while, my brothers and sisters. And before you know it, you will be talking to God as though you have known him all of your life. You might as well, because that is how long he has known you. He has known you for all of your life. So, 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 so the first thing that I want to share with us, I've shared with you all is, is that prayer must come from the head and not from our heart. All right. So that brings me now to the second point that I want to make. The second point that I want to make my brothers and sisters is very simple. All right. Because after we realize that our prayer must come from the from from the heart and not from the head. All right. The second thing that we 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 need to understand and know is this. All right. We must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that prayer must make us partners with God and then partners with each other. I think I better say that again. Second point that I want to make is prayer must make us partners with God and partners with each other. It awakens our relationship with the Father. God never intended to pray. He never intended prayer to be a one-sided communication. We speak, God listens. God speaks, we listen. In our lesson tonight, in our text, for tonight, we hear 
the writer, James, who is the brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says to us, he says to the church, these words, confess your faults one to another, that you may be healed. It then follows saying the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It is no accident, my brothers and sisters, that James said we should confess before we pray. Confession does a couple of things, but most importantly, confession cleanses us and makes us righteous in the sight of God. It is the confession and the cleansing that makes our prayer powerful. Listen, watch this. When I pray, if I'm feuding with you, God's not going to answer my prayer. Help me somebody. When I pray, if I'm cheating on my wife, guess what? God is not going to answer my prayer. Come on. When I pray, if I'm stealing from my boss, God will not answer my prayer. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say here? When I pray, if I am stingy and self-centered and selfish, guess what? God will not answer my prayer. Do, do you hear what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? What I'm saying is, 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 is we got to be right when we pray. We can't be feuding with one another. We can't be cheating on one another. We can't be stealing from one another, and we can't be stingy and selfish and self-centered. We've got to clean up. All right, some of y'all might not think you need to clean, get cleaned up. All right, well, listen, I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I know i got issues just like the next person. So I've got to clean up my, my, my mind. I've got to clean up my body. I've got to clean up my spirit before I can send up my prayer to God. Only then can I become a partner with God in my future. When it comes to confession, the most frequent question that people ask me is, why do I have to confess before man, before God will partner with me in prayer? The short answer is because God said so. But here's some food for thought. If you committed your sin before men, why not confess them before men? An open confession of your sin nature does two things. Number one, it helps others who battle with sin. Number two, it holds you accountable, not only to God, but to your fellow Christians as well. Most especially when you face the same temptations again. Because watch this, the enemy knows where you are. And he knows your weaknesses. And he's going to do everything that he can to stop you in your tracks. We have to confess to one another. And when we confess to one another, so that we can unify our efforts to edify the body by helping each other with our vulnerabilities. See, and I'm not saying that when we pray that you have to spill out your guts about all the illicit details of your sin. Just openly confessing that you are a sinner is enough to show others that you acknowledge your imperfection. Besides, you would be surprised what they know already anyway. God is ready and he's waiting for you and I to confess clean up and partner with him in prayer. So let's understand that prayer must make us partners with God and partners with each other. Here's the final point I want to make tonight. Here's the final point that I want to make tonight. The final point that I want to make to us tonight, my brothers and sisters, is this. All right. Since we realize that prayer must come from the heart and not the head, and since prayer must make us partners with God and partners with each other, 
Here's the final thing that prayer must do. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, must do this. Prayer must give us direction. Prayer must give us direction. James tells us, and he says it in that 16th verse, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, what? Availeth much. In other words, it benefits us much. It is to, it is to our advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, God is waiting. He's waiting to communicate with the righteous body of his son, Jesus Christ. When we clean up, the windows of heaven open up. And when we pray, God pours out blessings. Those blessings include the very direction he wants our lives to take. As Christians, my brothers and sisters, we can get so sure of ourselves that we forget to include God in the routine parts of our day. It is as if we're saying, I got this God. We know how to do this on our own. You can take a break, my brothers and sisters, if you want to. But Psalm 18, one and two says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. That does not sound like a God who wants to be our backup plan. If you know what I mean, my brothers and sisters, that when all else fails, call on God. It sounds more like God wants to be in control, that God wants to be in charge, that God wants to be at the wheel when everything is going on. That's the kind of God that we serve, my brothers and sisters. One that wants to be the captain of our soul. Prayer, ladies and gentlemen, comes from the heart. Prayer makes us partners with God and with each other. And prayer gives us direction. I want us to know tonight that prayer is a ser it's serious business, ladies and gentlemen. It is not something to be taken lightly. It is not a habitual string of holy sounding words meant to impress those around us, but rather it is a genuine petition from a repentant child to his forgiving father. I want to ask today, whose turn is it to pray at your house this Thanksgiving? Whoever it is, God wants to hear from your heart, not your head. God wants to hear a prayer from a surrendered spirit, someone who has partnered with him through confession. God wants to hear a prayer from someone with a repentant heart who has come with thanksgiving in his heart and is willing to receive the Lord's direction. You might be asking, will God hear your prayer? Well, James chapter four, verse number eight says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. When you pull your chair up to the table for Thanksgiving dinner on tomorrow, you will also be pulling up to the spiritual table God has prepared for you. So when you come to the table, come with a clean heart. Psalm 139, verse 23, Psalm 139, 23 and 24 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When you come to the table to pray, come desiring to partner with God through prayer. Psalm 55, 16 and 17 says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. When you come to the table, come my brothers and sisters, come asking for God for direction. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in all of thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. 
He will hear you when you pray. He will supply your every need. He will give you what you ask. He will open when you knock. He will reward you when you seek. He will receive you when you come before his presence with thanksgiving. And we ought to be thankful and we ought to thank him because look at what God did. He gave his only son and his son gave his life. His son died on the cross. And because of the fact that he died on the cross, my brothers and sisters, we ought to be thankful and grateful for what he's done. Whose turn is it to break? It's all our turn. That's whose turn it is. It's all of our turn to pray. It's all our turn to pray. God bless you. God keep you. Listen, you might be with us tonight and you might want to come and be a part of the Rising Star Baptist Church family. On tonight, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever you might be, I want you to know tonight that all you have to do is just surrender your life to Jesus and come to him. The Bible is clear. The Bible shares with us in Romans chapter three, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. As a result of our sins, my brothers and sisters, there are consequences. There's a punishment for sin. There are consequences that we have to pay. Romans chapter six, verse 23, the A clause of that verse says, the wages of sin is death. But thanks be to God, because God loved us and gave his only begotten son, the gift of God is eternal life. And we get that because of what Jesus did. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16 and 17, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Romans 5 and 8 says to us that God can commendeth his love. He demonstrates his love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. My brothers and sisters, you can come to Jesus tonight, right now. All you have to do is acknowledge that you are a sinner. Believe that God sent his son and that his son died on the cross, was buried and rose again from the dead. And once you do that, all you got to do is confess him. Confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Romans 10 and 13 says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tonight, you can be saved. You can be saved tonight. Listen, you can come and join us at the Rising Star Baptist Church, 109-25, 164th Street, Jamaica, New York. I don't, I don't have the, I don't have, I don't have that uh, information in front of me tonight to show you on the screen. All right, but you can come and be, join us in person at Rising Star Church every Sunday. Our Sunday school starts at nine o'clock. Our morning worship starts at at eleven o'clock, ten forty-five for our praise and worship team. All right, then after that. Uh, you can come and join us and be with us in person. Now, if you can't get with us in person, of course, you can join us like you're joining us right now on our social media page, or you can come and join us on our conference call line. All right. Um, um, but come and join us. Come and join us. Listen, now, if you can't get to us and come and give, us, give Jesus your life in person, you can do it virtually. All right. And once you do, and simply do that, once you give your life to him, wherever you are, wherever you might be, you might want to talk to somebody. You might need somebody to talk to. You can email us at the Rising Star Baptist Church. You can email us. Our email address at Rising Star Baptist Church is rsbc109 at aol.com. Once again, our email address is rsbc109 at aol. Dot com. One more time, our email address is rsbc109 at aol.com. If you want to talk to somebody, if you want to call the church, uh, if we're not there to answer the phone, you can call the church and leave a message. You can leave a message on, on, on our answering service, 
uh, the church telephone number is 718-526-2994. Once again, you can leave us a message at the church, our, our telephone number, 718-526-2994. I just want you to come to Jesus tonight. Watch this. You might already know Jesus, but you're not in church. You can come and you can give God your life and you can come and return back to God. You might have left the church. You can come back. God is married to the backslide. You can come back to the church. Come and join God. Come, come be, come, come make your connection back with God and come join us at Rise and Start Church. 109-25, 164th Street, Jamaica, New York, 11433, United States of America. All right. Listen, let me just share with you real quickly. I, I noticed that my, my, my people have already put it in the chat uh, on our Facebook page. Um, I want you to also take notice, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, that in addition, in addition to that, you can be a blessing financially to the Rising Star Baptist Church. All right. Uh, you can give to us. You can give electronically through our Zell. Our Zell is rsbc109 at aol.com. That's our email address. That's our Zell. You can you can you can Zell us. Our Zell again is rsbc109 at aol.com. All right. Or you can come to one of our worship services and give in person. Or you can mail us, you can mail us our address, Rising Star Baptist Church, 109-25, 164th Street, Jamaica, New York, 11433. Attention, trustees ministries. Make your checks and our money orders payable to Rising Star Baptist Church. All right. I want to thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much for being with us on tonight. Again, we're praying for all of those names that we've called out tonight, and I want you to have a great Thanksgiving. I want you to enjoy family, enjoy friends, but always remember that every day is Thanksgiving, and it is always your turn to pray. It is always your turn to pray. I'm getting ready to pray right now. Our Father, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that you've blessed us to be in prayer. Thank you for this opportunity that you've blessed us to be in meditation. Thank you for the opportunity of being able to call on your holy and righteous name. Thank you for the few people that have been with us tonight who have shared with us in this experience. I pray, dear Lord, that you will continue to bless us, that you will continue to keep us in your care. We love you, and we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all of the honor. Thank you tonight, dear God because you're so good and so kind and so merciful unto us. Now, Lord, as we leave, don't forget to meet us at our place of needs. Whether it's physical, emotional, financial, moral, intellectual, financial again, or spiritual, please meet us at our place of need. Fill us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we know, God, that we're not praying from our heads, but we're praying from our hearts. Thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you that your son gave us life, that we might have life, and that more abundantly. Now continue to bless us, continue to keep us. All of the names that I've called out tonight, you know what they stand in need of. Meet their needs tonight in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, whatever I have failed to ask you in this prayer, please do not fail in granting it unto it. And tonight we give you thanks. Every day we give you thanks. Every moment we give you thanks. Every second of our lives we give you thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to bless us as our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Now the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now, henceforth and forever. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. God keep you. Have a wonderful night. And again, happy Thanksgiving. God bless you.